Hello and welcome to Wilderness TV. This week we take a look behind the scenes of Bristol's water hatchery, Ubley, and talk to Tony Donnelly about the move to stocking triploid trout. The hatchery was completed in 1910, so the hatchery itself is, is just over 100 years old now. Um, the hatchery um, at the time, as I say, was only used for stocking Blagden, so when Chew was completed in 1954, that uh, increased the, the burden on the hatchery in terms of, of output, what we were having to create to, to, to be able to stock the lakes with what they needed to, to operate as fisheries. Sexually mature fish run up the river um, into the hatchery at the top end of Blagden um, any time between mid-October till, till mid-late December. But once the fish are collected in the horseshoe pond, they're ready for stripping. As you all know, the Blackburn Lake is down here off to my right here. The River Yeo, when you come in, is running up through here. The river runs up behind the back of the hatchery here. Um, and it goes on at the river. We put some boards down the river and divert the fish up into the hatchery here. Um, it's an old mill leak. The, there used to be a mill in the house here, sort of thing, um, and the water was fed there before they had the hatchery here, and that's why I think they built the hatchery here. It was a ready-made place with the leak there. We've got an awful lot of fish run out, but most we've had it for a few years. Um, whether it's because we've got high water level, or whether you lot didn't catch them this year, I don't know. <laughs> We're breeding them better in, in fighting better, I think. That's our, uh, that's our excuse. But um, yeah, we've got loads of fish run up. Last year, I think we, in total, I think we had about 25 browns run up. Um, John tells me we've had over 200 run up so far this year. So, right, start off with a rainbow then. Right, the um, normal stocky, really, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, yep. So what we really do is, is, she is nice and ready, you can always tell that she's soft under the tummy. It's good practice to, to first of all, strip um, the eggs from uh, at least two or three females into a bowl. Uh, very important to keep water out of the equation because this, this causes the eggs to harden and prevents the sperm from being able to fertilise the egg. So first of all, we collect up the, the, the hen's eggs, strip those into a, a clean basin. And once we've got eggs from a few hens, we are then ready to strip the milt from the cockfish. The eggs are stripped out of them and fertilised. The eggs are laid down um, and we have to wait for them to eye up and hatch. Uh, once the eggs have hatched, they're at the alevin stage. Uh, depending on water temperature, ideally that will be uh, anything from two and a half to five weeks. Um, the colder it is, the longer that takes. Uh, once they've absorbed their egg sac and they're no longer alevins, they then turn to first feeding fry or swim up fry. Uh, at this point, it's very important to um, be feeding them um, uh, regularly. Um, to get them used to the feeding so that their palate gets used to taking food. We then move them into bigger fry tanks, um, ideally on the spring water supply down here at Blagden, and, and there we have constant water temperature and they grow nice and quickly. Um, after you've got them onto the feed properly, it's, it's fairly straightforward after that, um, as long as you have no disease issues, um, which thankfully we don't have too many problems, but it's, it's then just a case of keeping feeding them um, we have to grade them a few times to take off the faster growing from the slower growing. This in, improves feeding efficiency and, and therefore this sort of uh, reduces your feed costs and, and, and makes it more economical for us to be stocking as many fish as we do. Um, the site here at Blagden is where we do our own growing. So fish are brought over here at around, it can be anything from 200 grams to 400 grams. Um, or half a pound to a pound in weight uh, in, in old money. Um, once the fish are here, this is a very good site. We, uh, usually we have a lot of spring water and this is the ideal water source to grow them in. Uh, it, it negates any disease problems. We have very few disease problems, constant temperature and the fish feed hard. Um, from start to finish, we are probably looking at from eggs being fertilised to being ready to be stocked into the lake, uh, you're looking somewhere between 16 to 18 months. Um, that's currently with all the research and development that's been done on feed, I, I would dare say historically it, it would have taken a lot longer um, to, to, to get fish for that side or a lot more feed would have to go into them. Historically, we were rearing our own fish right through from the, the fertile fish running up the river right through to stocking size, and these were all diploid fish. Now, there's gonna be a change in legislation in 2015, which dictates to us that all the fish that we stock into our lake must be triploids. Now, it, it, 
it is a shame that we're going to lose the heritage of, of rearing and stocking our own fish, uh, especially our own brownies, which we've had generations and generations of, um, right from back in the, the very first stockings um, in, in 1904. But, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's not a bad thing that things are going to change. Um, once we go to stocking all triploids, that does have uh, benefits to us on the fish rearing side, and I would also dare say that it'll have benefits to the anglers as well. So the, there's not a huge difference in how we will be rearing the triploids compared to previously how we did it with the diploids. Um, what we'll do is we're buying in eggs from a, a, a reliable certified source, um, triploid eggs that have been pressure treated. Um, the eggs come in at the idle stage, so it saves us around three, three weeks or four weeks of labour of picking dead eggs in the hatchery. When they come in the idle stage, they're, they're usually five to seven days away from hatching. You don't suffer many mortalities and it just reduces the workload on us and also reduces the chances that a change in water at the hatchery could, could cause uh, mortalities amongst the eggs. After that, um, there's going to be no difference in, in how they're reared. Uh, the only difference between them is that we will find that the triploids will be growing much quicker than, than the diploids. Um, from speaking to people, other people that have been rearing triploids for a long time, there, there's a feeling that uh, once the triploids get to around a pound in weight, that's when you really start to notice the, the difference. The growth weight rate really kicks on then, and that's where you can pack on the weight really quickly. The, the wisdom behind the change into stocking um, all triploids uh, rather than being able to stock diploids is, is to protect wild fish from things like uh, genetic intergression and if, if you have um, fish that are non-native or genetically not native to a certain area and they start reproducing naturally then they are outcompeting the, the natural fish from that ecosystem for food resources and for habitat. Um, certainly with rainbow trout is they are a, a, an aggressive feeder. They grow much more quickly in the farmed environment than the brown trout, which is that's why we stock so many rainbow trout now, is they're easier to grow. So I would dare say that the, there's the potential in the, in the wild environment that they could displace natural populations of fish. Another benefit of stocking triploids is that it's, it's another step to showing that you're rearing fish in a, a responsible manner. As a, as a fish farming facility, we have a responsibility to, to be doing things the right way. Um, sometimes it means jumping through a lot more hoops for, for the, the, the bureaucratic side of things, but um, I don't see this as a bad thing. Is, is, is All our units are self-contained, closed, very little chance of escape. Any fish that we stock are, are done in, uh, through the right channels, through filling out the, the section 30s and having fish disease tested. So I see it as just another step in showing that, that fish farms and fisheries can, can be run in a responsible, environmentally friendly way. The main benefit for the angler is that once those triploids are stocked into the lakes, there will be no uh, loss in weight or no desire to stop feeding. They should just feed continually and, and feed hard. Um, a lot of the diploids that we stock, probably from around July onwards, are starting to think about putting uh, energy and food resources into, into making eggs and, and, and milk. Um, and this is, this is not good, you know, they start to lose condition, maybe their, their fins and their, their, their physical appearance doesn't heal up as well. So I'm confident that, that with the triploids, what we'll see is, especially towards the back end, September, October, that we'll have a lot more big silver fish in the lakes that aren't losing condition. The hatchery here at Ubley produce about 120,000 trout each year, and Chew and Blagden are renowned for producing good quality, hard-fighting fish. We've enjoyed our visit to Ubley, and are looking forward to a great year's fishing on the lakes. If you would like to visit the hatchery, then join our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash wilderness TV and we will let you know when Ubley have their next open day. Thanks for watching and tight lines.